Today, I want to talk to you about pelvic inflammatory disease, also known as PID. I'm going to ask a series of questions and provide answers. Let's begin. So what is pelvic inflammatory disease? It is inflammation and infection of the upper genital tract. This includes the uterus, fallopian tube, and the ovaries. The infection is due to either Neisseria gonorrhoeae and or Chlamydia trachomatis. How are these organisms transmitted? Both Neisseria gonorrhoeae and Chlamydia trachomatis are transmitted during sexual intercourse. They infect the uterus, fallopian tube, and the ovaries. Inflammation follows the infection. Hence, it is called pelvic inflammatory disease. How will a woman with PID present? The classic presentation is lower abdominal or pelvic pain, vaginal discharge, and dyspareunia, which is painful sex, with or without vaginal bleed. What will be seen on the physical examination? Well, start with the vital signs. Um, we're going to check for fever, tachycardia, and hypotension. Examine the right upper quadrant as well as the lower abdomen. There will be definitely low abdominal tenderness. The bimanual pelvic examination will demonstrate cervical motion tenderness, uterine tenderness, and or adnexal tenderness with a 92 to 96% sensitivity in identifying acute PID. This means that a normal exam of these areas decrease the likelihood of PID. The speculum exam should reveal yellow mucopurulent cervical discharge and cervical friability. Cervical friability is present when a cotton swab inserted into the cervical os easily elicit bleeding. Is it possible for a woman to have PID without knowing it? Yes, it is very possible. The person may have subclinical PID if it is caused by chlamydia. What are the risk factors for PID? Risk factors include intercourse with multiple partners, age, previous history of PID, intrauterine device implantation, and tub tubal ligation. What are the complications of PID? There are two categories of complications. Short-term complications include tubal ovarian or pelvic abscess. Long-term complications include scarring and adhesion of the fallopian tube, which may lead to ectopic pregnancy, infertility, and chronic pelvic pain. If you are considering tubal ovarian abscess, then a pelvic sonogram should be performed. Can a pregnant woman develop PID? During pregnancy, it is rare. PID during pregnancy is very rare and is most commonly seen early in the first trimester. It is associated with adverse pregnancy-related outcomes, including preterm labor, low birth weight, and perinatal mortality, as well as birth defects such as atrial septal defect and cleft lip. Due to these associations, the CDC currently recommends 
admission and parenteral antibiotics for all pregnant women with PID. What tests should be ordered if PID is considered? First, you do gonorrhea and chlamydia, the nucleic acid amplification tests, the NAT, N-A-A-T. It is highly sensitive and reliable. Samples may be obtained from the cervix, vagina, or first void urine. Then HIV and syphilis, hepatitis B and the C, vaginal culture, and the ESR, CRP, and the CBC. How is PID treated? The CDC recommends the following for first-line treatment for outpatient therapy. Start with doxycycline, 100 milligrams orally twice a day for two weeks, plus ceftriaxone, 500 milligrams intramuscularly for one dose. If, if um, ceftriaxone is not available, cefoxetine may be used, and that is cefoxetine, 2 grams IM, with probenicid. Probenicid can be given orally, 1 gram orally, and that's for one dose. Or another parenteral, parenteral third generation cephalosporin may be used. In addition, you can add metronidazole, 500 milligrams orally, twice a day for 14 days. And this should be added if there's a concern for trichomonas or recent vaginal instrumentation. Well, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This information was published in the Emergency Medicine Practice. You may access their site at empractice.net. And please subscribe for cutting-edge information. I wish you well. Good night.